What holds up spiritual progress is resistance, huh? This resistance is automatic. You can presume that it's going to go about, go on its way, because the ego, as I explained before, has a vested interest in positions. I mean, the vested interest in being right. You know what I mean? Hey, I'm right. Now, people are willing to die for being right. So you're not talking about something very this mild. The ego would just soon see you dead as long as it remains right. And it kills people right and left every day, doesn't it? Rather be, rather die than say you're wrong. So the investment that the ego has is its own survival. The ego is not interested in your survival. You know that your own mind is not even interested in your own survival? It'll put you over the cliff anytime it wants to, to prove a point. It's not your friend. It's, uh, it's interested in its own narcissistic self-satisfactions. Its prime satisfaction, its prime delusion is the main resistance is the narcissistic core of the ego is its belief in its own sovereignty. Becoming enlightened is really overcoming the claim and the domination of the ego to maintain its sovereignty. It will maintain its sovereignty at the price of your physical life. It will put you to death anytime, rather than become, let you become enlightened. The refusal to accept that God is the sole source of all that is, is the ego's. The ego would like to tell you that it is the originator of your movements and actions. Huh? If we look at the ego, I think I, in the last book of the one I'm writing now, I did a pretty good job in describing the ego. I got dead to rights. <laughs> and uh, the ego uh, maintains the illusion of sovereignty. What do I mean by that? Well, the ego's functions are very complex. Uh, the ego has to sort millions of bits of data continuously in milliseconds, it's processing all that you've ever known, all your perceptions, all your belief systems, comparing it with past, calculating, and it's an extremely complex and incredible organism, mechanism. The ego presumes that there is a, there is a, there is a central office to its functions. So the ego has all these complex, com capacities, memory, comparison. If you look at a zebra, instantly your mind is compared with every other zebra you've ever seen. A uh, TV thing about zebras comes up, uh, the camouflage value of black and white, and you, the fact that you think it's BS theory, etc. All this passes through your mind, it's all sorted, and, and the, 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 the ego is a very complex operation. Extremely complex. No way a computer can even get near imitating it. Artificial intelligence can only take a small strand of it, which you can follow with, with logic and within the differential calculus, but it cannot go to the nonlinear domain because the nonlinear domain by definition is not knowable in, in a sequential way. So this complex ego function presumes a central control office. Eh? This central control where all its massive functions, uh, like the central command, is presumed to be the I. Hmm. At all times, the ego claims to be the author of all these phenomena. When a person says I, what they're talking about is the central organizing core of their ego. Yeah? This central organizing core like the Wizard of Oz is behind the screen and manipulating all this stuff. Yeah. Claims to be sovereign, sovereign. It is God. <clears throat> so, 
the person then claims credit and takes blame because it's claimed that the I is responsible. The giving up of that illusion is what the ego fights to the death. And it's really um, who is sovereign, God or the ego. The resistance is surrendering this illusion of sovereignty of the narcissistic eye of the ego and realizing that your survival from moment to moment, everything you do and think, is a result of the presence of the self with a capital S. Small self claims credit, but it's the, the greater self that is the great sustainer of your life. 